Hello, my name is uh, Ryan Scott White, and um, I've spent a little time checking into uh, how can we detect an infinite loop in a program. Um, see if, w will a program get stuck in an infinite loop or not? Um, and we, we can find this out by running the program or simulating the program. And if the program gets stuck, wraps around to a previous state, then we've detected the loop pretty easy. Um, so let me uh, step back for a moment um, so, and just go through some of this. First off, there's um, no sources in this because this is just from my own playing around. Uh, a finite program will either get stuck in a loop or not. Since a finite program only has a limited number of states, we will either get stuck in an infinite loop or the program will end. And notice there, there is no will run forever. That's because we have the word finite in there. Uh, a finite program, by the way, is just a is just a machine program um, that um, doesn't have infinite memory. So pretty much every machine that we know of today, every computer, laptop, supercomputer, they're all finite machines and or finite programs. Or, yeah. So anyway, so. Um, uh, let me pull this drawing I have real quick. So a program so will start, right? And then it's going to move through a bunch of states, right? And it's going to go for state 1, state 2, state 3. And they, they always go, you know, in order. There's always the next state. And that's the definition of a program. And it goes through and it will run and it will get to the end and stop. This is true for all programs, um, aside from ones that have user input um, or, or some sort of input, external input, but they will go from the start to the end, unless there's a problem and that it returns to a previous state. We run down here and then we get to this you know, state right here, but it also matches state n you know, earlier in the program. So basically it's kind of going up here. We always know that you know state n is this jumps to n plus one, so we're here, and then we here, 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 and then we get back down to here again, and then loop and loop and loop, and we're stuck. So we just have to detect one loop and then we're done. Um, push that aside. So um so to detect a, a loop, uh, it's pretty simple. At each step of the program or instruction, we will take a, a snapshot of the state. Um, this includes the memories, the registers, the program counter. So basically everything that kind of makes up the, the program has to be everything. Um, so, and real quick, um, when you see this loop here, um, this is, is not the, like a loop in a program. Um, um, so when you see a for loop or a while loop, that's different because a while loop would be kind of unwrapped here, if you will, um, and just continue on. Um, so, so in a, in a for loop, for example, you know, when you get back to the top of the for loop, um, the whole state of the program is just a little bit different than the first time. So yeah, make now note real quick. So at each step of the program, we take a, a snapshot of the state. And then also at each step, um, we check to see if the current memory um, of the current state matches any existing in memory, so a previous state. Um, and then we just keep doing this until, you know, for each step of the program, we go down, 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 and then we either get to the end or we'll detect a loop. So we wait for the program to end or get stuck in a loop. Since there are only so many possible states, we are guaranteed we will not have to wait forever. So um, back to this, yeah, finite program. So this is kind of like any uh, a finite computer, finite machine. Um, nothing has infinite memory. So every machine that we know of, phone, laptop, they're all finite machines. Um, and uh, they only have so many states. So like if you take a one-bit machine, okay, 
it's only going to have you know two states so it you know the program will start it might be at either state and then it will run to the next state and then it'd have to be done at that point but it could get stuck it could keep looping back to zero for example and it'd be stuck um, but say we have a two-bit computer all right so we can have right so we can have those four states with the two-bit computer so we might start out in this state and then the program then moves to this state then moves to this state and ends right or it might fail move go to this state and then go to this state you know and then go back to this state but we already know that this state moves to this state, so it would be stuck in the loop. But uh, going back to that, um, so this statement here, or you know, not to run forever, is because there's there's only so many states you can have. This one only has four, so we only have to wait four steps maximum to figure out if it ends or if it doesn't. Now, if you have a a machine with 32 bits um, that is going to be 4 billion steps right so it you know in a, in a computer is way more than 32 bits it's like well it, as big as you want it it could be hundreds of megabytes gigabyte so it might it seems like there's infinite possibilities but technically there's not there is a finite number of them so yeah so let me move on to the um, next part here so I was trying I was thinking about this I was thinking hmm you know there has to be some better ways to to uh, do this one idea I had was um, well why don't we just keep the most recent you know instead of recording the memory at every single step which is kind of intensive right well, why don't we just record the, the memory, you know, I log two times. So we record it here, you know, and then, you know, at, at step two, we keep two. At step four, we keep four. At step eight, we keep eight. If you notice, that these explanation points are, are where we keep it. So we stop it here. So we're really only keeping one at a time. Um, so just real quick on this diagram here. Um, this is the, let me change this a little bit, make it more clear. Um, so this is the, the state of the recordings, uh, or, you know, the state history, if you will. Um, so this is the state. And then this is the, as you move down, this is how it moves through time. So when you record a state, um, <clears throat> you don't know if you're stuck in a loop or not. So this is what the program assumes, but this is actually what's happening. And uh, you know, going through here, um, we can see that uh, zero. Um, well, that we wrap around, that we're pretty much guaranteed to uh, to stop because if you notice the the uh, you know the, the recordings or, or the states are moving pretty linear but the the rate of the um, snapshots length of time we keep them are longer so uh, so you know, say if we failed this example shows if we failed at three I'm sorry failed at nine and then we jump back to three so that means nine is the same or three is the same as nine here so we we move you know we run zero run one or state two state three four five six seven eight and we get to state nine it's really the same as step three here so and then this state three goes to four five six and seven and and this state seven it's red here because um, and we detected a loop. So I believe, 
Um, this would take up to 2n time, uh, 2n is the, the length the program has been running to detect the loop. I'm sorry, I think it might be n plus m actually. Anyway, um, so yeah, anyway, so that was one method, right? So you don't want to keep recording it every time, you know, every single step because that's a lot. Um, so then I was like, hmm, it's not perfect um, because it could take n plus m or 2n. I have to check that to, to see what uh, length of time is needed. So if I move on to the next thing, then it was, I was like, hmm, what if we keep the, you know, the most recent powers of 2 or, you know, log 2. Anything not divisible by 2, we keep 2 history, right? Anything divisible by 2, once, we keep 4 history. Anything divisible by 2 twice, like 4, because 4 divided by 2 is 2, and that is also divided by 2, um, then we keep it 8. And 8, of course, would be 16. So, um, so with this, at any point on average, something like we're keeping log two copies of the memory, and actually that is not uh, that's not too bad because log two, um, as especially as the numbers get really big, um, you're not keeping every single state. It it grows very slowly. So I think, you know, I know two to the power of thirty two. Um, is like four trillion, right? Four billion for. So when you're at step four billion, you've only got 32 copies of memory. It's just gonna keep going slower from there. Um, but yeah, so this is um, what this is. Just a little example again. You know, we get to step 10. I kind of changed it a little bit, so this one's a little different. This would be loop fail actually at 10. So this isn't quite correct. So loop fail at 10, so ignore that 11, it should be 10. So it would wrap around a 5, but we would guaranteed hit it at 8. Oh yeah, and one thing cool about this is we will detect it. Advantages of this is we'll uh, speed things up because we'll detect it within the first loop. Um, so that's kind of cool. So <clears throat> um, on average, we'll detect it in half the size of the loop as well. Because sometimes you'll be jumping... Um, you know, up to the full length of the loop, and then the other, you know, half the time, it's going to be less than half. So it's kind of all going to balance out it's, um, on average. Uh, we'll still have drawbacks as we'll require um, log two um, copies of the whole system memory. But one drawback with this state also too is that, you know, we're also checking the state at each step, right? So if you have a computer program, it's not going to be very practical if, you know, every time you run a CPU instruction, you have to check the entire state to see if it matches any of the ones that exist. Even if there's only 32 of them or 35 or whatever. But still, that's going to majorly impact, right? So then I went on to every X state. So then we'll, what we could do is, um, so this example, we the loop starts at zero and ends in 35. Do I have random here? I do, good. So this is just filled by a random number. So that's kind of a big one. Let's go to a small one, 17. Um, so, that's actually a bad one, but I'll get to that in a moment. So with this one, you know, we're only going to take, yeah, you know, analyze the, the memory, you know, do a check to see if it exists in the previous one every 210 steps, right? So we hit 210 steps, then we will record the memory and um, check to see if it exists. I mean, that, that saves you 210 times faster, right? And 
actually a little less memory too using the log you know keeping the most recent log twos so yeah anyway i think that's a pretty cool uh, uh setup here um and experimenting um, i found that primoral uh, numbers are best for the ch chunk size when i say chunk size that's basically we're, we run 210 instructions and then we check another 210 and then we check so i call that the chunk size here but if we use these ones um, these are divisible by you know two so if you take two times three right you get six and you get times five you get 30. These are prime numbers, by the way, as we're getting this. Times 7, you should get to 10. Times 11, you think you're going to get this one right here. Times 13, etc. you'll get this hidden one over here. So basically what that means is uh, whenever you hit, hit one of those powers of 2, you're going to have the same one across the screen. And and if you only have two powers, you know, if you have one that makes up two, then you're, you're just going to score really well. Um, worse would be to have a prime number here. Um, and it's also bad to have a prime number up here, too. Um, but here's 12, for example, right? There's only two numbers on the board. So, so what's cool about this is if we look at the histories here, you know, when we go get stuck in a loop here, right? We're, we're gonna detect it. I mean, almost instantly here, right? Not instantly, but within the first loop, definitely for this one, right? So, so using this every x state, by the way, if you're not always gonna catch it in the first loop. Actually, most of the time you won't, um, especially with bigger numbers. But these small ones, you often do. But so, so yeah, so with this one, if we go to the zero, right? Um, so we're going to 12. This is really hard to read, by the way, because we're going to zero to 12, like a ton of times till we get to 210. And when we do that, we end up being at step six. So that's why six is there, right? And then we run another 210 and we get to the zero. We run another 210, we get to the six. Another 210, we get to the zero. Another 210, we get to the six. Another 210, we get to the zero. But if you notice, if, if we, you know, <laughs> check if these zeros exist, then we're, we're, pretty, we're pretty good. So yeah, if you did a check here, actually, you know, when you hit this, this one, I'm sorry, we're traveling down this lane. If we, you know, get this one, we would have detected this zero here, right? Because we would have had that zero in memory. So, um, and it's kind of confusing here, but this zero, it would be detectable um, in this step, right? Because we first check to see if it's deleted I mean, we first check to see if it it's there before we delete it, and then if it's not, then we delete it and record the new stuff. So, but anyway, um, there's minor details. Uh, so yeah, try a different one. Well, of course, zero to one, but again, it's all zeros. Um, 64, so this is a bad one because it's divisible by two, like, but six times so you're gonna have I think this is um, yeah kind of bad here um, these are also bad so here we have actually I could scroll down here oh no I guess I lost it I had distinct values oh here it is we have 32 different values so we have you know half as many so anyway, so we go down here and we fail and we start traveling down one of these. Uh, we're going to, um, the chances of us, so 
That's 34. This would be 52, but the 16 is covering it. Um, so, you know, is, is that covered anywhere? Um, no, it's not. Um, so, so yeah, this is the, what the memories we're keeping and, and these are the loops. Let me change this to like five. And I'm going to change this down to something really small, like six. Okay. So, so we run zero, six, 12, we don't fail until we get to 40. So we're running, so we're running each of these lines right here, right? So we, this would be the last one we, we run and then, and then we would get stuck in a loop, right? So this, after this one would become, it would jump down to this red one right here. So with this red one, okay, would be 10. Because if you add six, because we still had one more to go here, plus five, um, plus a you know, chunk size of six, for the next one, we would end up back at 10 or at 10, and then we end up at 16. So we would be traveling down here, right? So we'd be traveling this one, then this one, then this one, but basically, yeah, going down here. So at each step, we'd be saying, oh, is this 28 exist anywhere? Nope. Does this 34 exist anywhere? Um, nope. It is 24, I should have went all the way across, right? This 34, does this exist? Nope. Does this 40 exist? Negative. Does this eight exist? Negative. Now you're saying it's eight all the way at the end here, but that's basically, that's where we're recording it, right? So um, the program thinks it's over here, right? So. It took a snapshot, but it actually recorded eight. So then we go to next uh, next one here. Um, 14, does it exist? 20, no. 26, negative. 32, does that exist? No. So, but eventually it would. It would hit one of these. Um, but yeah, so especially as we get more and more copies, um, we would hit it. So that's kind of a bad example. Um, so if we take a, a prime number, so prime number would be, I think, 22, would give us a size of 17, right? So that would be a size of 17, okay? Now if you look up here, we have 18 distinct values. Okay, so it's kind of uh, using this chunk size isn't really giving us any advantage anymore. Um, however, we did use this, this chunk size of six. The farther up you go here, the better off you are. So if we dump a 210 in there, Oh, oh, it's because we're at 17. Um, yep. Yeah. I'm not sure where the 17 gets hit. It might be this one. Eighteen. Uh, but I think when it hit when, it, when we hit the one with the 17, we will we should get a lower number, I believe. Yeah, two. So there you go. So the bigger number you get, the more, you know, lucky you are going to be. But if you get a really big prime that's bigger than this one has built into it, then it's going to be kind of, I think, the worst case scenario, possibly. Um, but also ones with lots of, lots of fa you know, factors, too, are bad as well. So anyway, that's... Uh, that's it. Um, the advantage of this will speed things up. Um, 
will detect it in the first loop. That is not correct. <laughs> I'll delete that. On average, I believe it will detect it in half the size of the loop. I think that I copied the previous tab. I should have wrote that. But anyway, the advantages to this one is um, using kind of prime numbers where we can detect. Um, we have a good chance of detecting detecting it early, especially using the kind of the recent log two kind of setup. Um, proof this will work. I didn't go that far. I ran out of energy. So I think that's it. I think this is really kind of interesting, though, the, the prime number stuff. Um, I love prime numbers. Oh, I had one more tab down here. Um, oh, also, too, uh, we, don't, we don't actually have to keep the whole state of the memory, too. Uh, right? The whole, you know, all the memory registers, etc. We could just create a hash from those and then and then keep those. Um, so so if you create a 64-bit hash, right, it's you're gonna have that many possibilities there, right? It's just huge, right? Or you can even do 128, the number would be twice the length, right? So the chances of a collision happening or 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 or, you know, the, the thing about doing hashes, right, is, is as you move down here, if, if two memory states actually hash to the same value, right, um, you'll de you could get a detection of a loop, a false loop. So, but as you get started to get these mind-boggling huge numbers, the chances of, you know, the collisions just become super rare um, and maybe acceptable so yeah um, so yeah that's kind of my playing around with loop detection in a program uh, hopefully this helps somebody uh, sorry this went a little long um, and have a great rest of your day thank you bye bye